What is up, Nephilim? This is the Chig coming at you with another Diablo 3 build guide. Today we're talking about season 30, we're talking about the monk, and we're talking about how much fun I'm having and how to speed farm your greater rifts. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that bell notification icon so you get notified every time I come out with a new video. Anyway, let's hop right into it. So, in the stuff. You guys have seen this before. This is the Speed Greater Rift build that I have settled on that I've been enjoying. So, first thing we're going to talk about in a set. Two piece. Increase the passive effect of your Mystic Ally and their base passive effect by your Monstra by 100%. That's incredible. Four piece. Gain the base effect of all four Monstras at all times. You gain 5% damage reduction for each Mystic Ally you have out, and your Mystic Allies no longer take damage. That's awesome. Gain the passive abilities of all five ruined mystic allies at all times. Attacking enemies create your chosen mystic ally that lasts for 15 seconds, up to 10 mystic allies. And the damage of your mystic allies is increased by 900% for each mystic ally you have out. That's the important one. So, when we talk about gameplay, I'll tell you how all that works together. But the thing is, we're going to get out as many as we can. We're going to activate them, and the screen is going to melt. We're also using the All Guild set. 3 out of 3. We got 3 out of 3 because we're wearing the Ring of Royal Grandeur. We'll talk about that in a second. Increases damage against everybody by 30%. Reduces damage taken by 15. And then reduces damage taken from elites by 30. And increases damage to elites by 30. So, working out perfect. We have the Ennis Helmet, the Ennis Chest, the Ennis Gloves, the Ennis Belt, the Ennis Pants. The other way you can run this... Everything is exactly the same, except you change your Measure Schmidt's Reaver in the cube to an Ingoem, you put on Inna's Reach, and you put on Frostburn Gauntlets. This is, the way I have it set up is a little less damage, but it's more smooth and fun to play because you go faster. You're wearing Squirt's Necklace while not taking damage. Damage gel is increased by up to 100%, and damage taken is increased by up to 50%, so it makes you hit harder, makes you take a little more damage. Uh, Guild's Search to get the three-piece. Focus and Restraint. Mine are a little meh at the moment, but we don't really care. First priority is to get a pair, no matter how bad they are, because you get multipliers. When you hit with a resource generating attack or primary skill, deal 50% increased damage for 5 seconds. When you hit with a resource spending attack, deal 50% increased damage for 5 seconds. This is just to keep these up and to keep your damage higher. We're wearing an Ingo M in one hand. Reduces the cooldown of your skills for 15 seconds after killing an elite pack. We are hunting elites with this build. Or using an Echoing Fury. Slaying enemies and Gulfs of Wilder into a Frenzy. If you've been playing for very long since this has been changed, a Frenzy just gives you more attack speed, making it incredibly fast. We're using the Crudest Boots. Mystic Allies summons two Mystic Allies that fight by your side that deal 177% increased damage. That rolls up to 200. And their active forms last longer. So this gives you double the mystic allies and then makes them last longer once you activate them which is really important to the build for gems enforcer make your pets hit harder your set already makes it where they can't die so make them hit harder bane of the trapped increase damage to slowed enemies and everything always slowed everything gets frozen and then once you hit level 25 with your bane of the trap you have an aura around you that slows them so it always is active bane of the powerful increase damage by 20% for 55 seconds after you kill an elite pack. And then once you hit level 25, always have that bonus. So here's the thing. Um, you don't really have to level this up further than level 25 because you will almost always take out an elite less than a minute later. In the chest and pants, if you need more toughness, go with resistance gems, put diamonds in there. If you need more um dps put emeralds in there that's cut and dry of it um this is slivers this season so slivers of the soul shard we're using sliver of terror in the hat so just level these to level three as quick as you can you do that with hell forge embers you get those really quickly so don't worry as soon as you get your gems go ahead and use them so, Sliver of Terror, it gives you the base thing of all the gems. So, 23% life, cooldown by 12.5, reduces resource cost by 14.5, reduces damage by range attacks by 15, more gold, more experience. So, here's where it gets cool. 
If three or more skills are on cooldown, your lightning and fire skill damage are increased by 50%. We don't care about that in this build. What we care about in this is your cooldowns are increased by 25%. For every skill on cooldown, you take 12.5% reduced damage and deal 12.5% increased damage. So our cooldowns are on cooldown longer, but when things are on cooldown, we get damage reduction and we get damage buffs. So works out the way we have it set. We're literally just spamming our buttons. You'll see that in the gameplay section momentarily. And then our other sliver is going to be Dregs of Lies. This is in the weapon. This gives you 271 damage. Poison skills deal more damage. Critical hit damage increased by 142%. Damage against elites. Life per hit. Thorns. Here's what is important for this build in particular. You deal 25% less damage. Your pets deal 25% more damage. All right. And then the other one is killing an elite enemy reduces all of your active cooldowns by five seconds. So we're kind of offsetting our cooldowns being longer by using that one. All right. So what we have in our other weapon is going to be an emerald just for increased critical hit damage. And then we are going to look at the cube. We have Measure Smith's Reaver. So reduce the remaining cooldown to one of your skills by one second whenever you slay an enemy. So there are two ways you can do this. You can put Measure Smith's Reaver in here just for the smoothness and the quality of life. Or you may put into your cube the Flying Dragon. If you have the Flying Dragon in your cube, um, it's just going to make your animations that much faster. And you're just going to be able to zoom a little bit better, which is great. But I prefer the smoothness and quality of life of Measure Smith's Reaver. You do what you like. Both are really great options. Blessing or Bindings of the Lesser Gods. Enemies hit by your Cyclone Strike take 200% increased damage from your Mystic Ally for 5 seconds. Spell fire or split fire allies gain three times this bonus. So what happens is you are basically whenever you get to a big pack, you're going to cyclone strike once and then you're going to mystic ally. So I will show you when I'm playing this, when we're playing through it, uh, you don't have to use mystic ally on cooldown. I use mystic ally if they're not currently split into waves or if I need spirit. Um, I don't particularly use it on cooldown. There's no reason to. You're just they're just always wiping the screen. And we're using Ring of Royal Grandeur in the last slot here. The reason we're using Ring of Royal Grandeur is so we can get all the set bonuses. It's great, makes it a lot easier. Um, when you get the build put together while you're getting that ready, you can very much wear the sixth piece, the crudest boots, put the bracers on, and then put the boots in your cube. Um, or you can wear the way, we uh, weapon, keep the crudest boots on, leave the bindings in your cube and put on the all guilds. All guilds is always great. So we don't really care too much about that. So let's move on to the talent. So we have way of the hundred fist here with blazing fist. Um, I use blazing fist to get a little more movement speed because we're trying to zoom, right? Um, you only really use way of the hundred fist once every five seconds. You'll see me a lot of times. I don't even hit it because I don't need that extra 50%, but using way of the hundred fist is going to proc your focus and restraint, give you 50% more damage. Epiphany desert shroud. You can do this to one of two ways. You can use desert shroud to give you a little bit more defense. Or after you get to the point where defense isn't a problem, you switch it over to insight to give you a little bit more spirit. This is going to do two things. It's going to give you more defense. It's going to give you more spirit. What else it's going to do is it's going to make it where if you cyclone strike, you teleport to where you cyclone strike. So it's also going to make it such that if your dashing strike is on cooldown, you can teleport using cyclone strike. So move right onto that dashing strike. Quickly dash. We're using the Radiance Rune because it gives you attack speed for four seconds after using Dashing Strike. The reason we're stacking attack speed so much in this is because more attack speed lets us dash faster. It's getting our movement speed up. It's letting us go faster, which is amazing. Cyclone Strike, just talked about that. We're using Implosion because we want it to go out further, pull up to 16 enemies within 34 yards towards you, followed by a Furious Blast for energy that deals damage. We don't care about the damage. We're just trying to stack them up. Serenity Ascension, you're enveloped in a protective shield that absorbs all damage for four seconds, grants immunity to all movement impairing effects. So Ascension increases its duration. All we're doing here, you can basically just use this on cooldown. 
you'll see me when I use it. The first thing I do is dash in right before I get to some enemies. I will pop Ascension. I will pop Serenity so I'm immune. Then I will Cyclone Strike. And then I will use Mystic Allies. So on our six piece, we get allies after we deal damage, right? So we have to deal damage to something with an attack to get more Mystic Allies. So when I dash in, that's gonna hit some enemies. And when I Cyclone Strike, that's gonna hit some enemies. So we need as many or as close to 10 of the Mystic Allies as we can get before we pop it. That way we have the highest multipliers, we have the highest number of waves, and it's making it a little bit better. Um, so when you move over to Mystic Ally, we're using the Cold Rune. We're gonna activate it to keep it up as often as we can. Perform seven waves attacks in quick succession. That's extended because of our um, set piece, causing weapon damage in coal, as cold and freezing enemies. So it's proccing our Bane of the Trap and it's doing all of our damage. So we want this going at all times. I'm gonna show you what this does in just a moment um, before we go into the rift but for now that's our biggest thing there um unity each ally affected by your mantras increases your damage up to a maximum of 20 and they have five percent increased damage so this just gives your allies more damage and gives you more damage based on your allies which is great relentless assault we deal more damage to enemies that are blinded frozen or stunned we always have them frozen with this build so we just unless they're juggernauts we always deal increased damage Seize the initiative. Every time we hit something above 75% HP, we get 30% increased attack speed. So like I said, we're just trying to get all the attack speed in the world. We're trying to go as fast as possible. This buff is almost always up. Watch my buff bar when I'm showing you the gameplay part. And then Beacon of Etar. This almost completely offsets the 25% longer cooldowns. This puts us back to basically baseline. So it's really easy to make everything work. So what you can do, if you need more toughness, um, obviously you can move these around. Uh, if you need Guardian's Path for dual wielding to get more dodge chance, that's fine. If you feel like you're getting popped every now and then and you just want to have the quality of life of having your um, cheat death on, that's also fine. Um, before we hop into a rift though, I want to tell you that if you use Inna's Reach, you also want to use Dregs of Lies. You just want to make sure that your um, allies are doing as much damage as possible. So let's hop into one. I'm going to show you guys a 90. It is super quick, super, super chill, super fun to play. So first thing, run until you see some mobs. Once you find some mobs, pop your invulnerability, pull them in, and then pop them with your allies, right? So now we are just zooming because our England popped. We are looking for elites. So let's find some elites. You can keep your buff up to make sure you're invulnerable as much as possible. Make sure your waves don't fall off and make sure you are watching your timer on your epiphany to keep it up as much as you can because if you're using the one that gives you toughness you get more toughness if you were using the one that gives you increased spirit you're getting faster spirit as you saw right there when my uh Ingolim fell off i didn't have faster cooldowns i didn't have instant dashes but what i did have was as i'm walking and as i'm just continuing to hit these mobs my cooldowns were going down here it's going again and I'm just getting it back, I'm getting it back, I'm getting it back. It's not as fast as if I had Ingoim up, but it is getting back super quickly. So this map is a really good one to demonstrate because it's really large, we get to go around in a circle. It works out, right? So when you kill yellow mobs, don't forget, you have to kill all of their minions to get your proc on your Ingoim. All right, see, we already cleared this first floor. We basically deleted all the mobs Keep dodging around, keep dashing around. And as long as your Ingoim's up, you can basically hold down the dash button. Otherwise, use it when it's up. That's the biggest thing, is making sure as you're dashing, you're going around, you're doing what you need to be doing. You're keeping up your serenity when you can. You're making sure that you always have your allies in wave form, if at all possible. And you're making sure that you're keeping up all of your other buffs as you're doing it, right? 
Um, it's basically keep up your buffs and make sure you are doing what you need to do to keep your damage up and keep your Ingolum buff going. So we're going to make sure we punch him. We're going to get all our buffs up. And there you go. We just did a 90 in 2 minutes and 20 seconds that was 3 fours long and had no problems at all. Um, for those of you who don't remember, 90 is the sweet spot for the amount of loot per time. So you want to get to less than 3 minute 90s. Um, you want to be farming your greater rifts to get as many um, shards and as many legendaries as possible. You almost always want to be 3 minutes or less. So if you're not consistently really close to or under three minutes go ahead and drop it down a couple levels until that's where you're at anyway this is the in a speed greater rift build i will be giving you the other versions of inna and then the other versions of the other builds coming up soon so stay tuned for that don't forget that so hit that subscribe button because the more of you are mine the more of you do and I will see you guys in the next one. See you guys in Sanctuary.